Okay, so our third speaker is uh, John Ma from the University of Tennessee, and he's going to be a bit more mobile, so we're going to try out this technology. Um, talking today about uh, seismic performance of unreinforced concrete railroad bridge piers. Okay, it works. Uh, thanks, Ben. Uh, uh, I, I think I'm going to uh, switch the gear a little bit. Uh, I was here in the first part of this presentation. Uh, most of the speakers talk about superstructure. So what I'm going to do is uh, focus on substructure. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, initially, I really want my PhD student, uh, this here, first author, a Chang, uh, to be here. He has been working on this problem for the last almost two years now. Uh, he has one more year to go. I want him to have experience, but uh, he ran out of time to get uh, his passport renewed and visa, all of that. So I have to do this in the last minute. I spent uh, yesterday changed his slide because some of the 90 analysis stuff, I couldn't do much. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, for the full uh, disclosure, uh, I did my uh, PhD on the topic of shear of NU girders in late 90s. During that time, I did read a lot of uh, Professor Collins' uh, paper. Uh, I see he's here. So um, we keep that in mind. So uh, this is what I'm going to focus on, really talk about the motivation of this project, uh, where we're heading. Uh, I really need your help. Uh, that's what I want uh, Chan to get from you, because as I said, he has one more year. Uh, as you can tell, I don't have a conclusion for you today, so I'm going to give you a little bit of summary. Okay, so what do you see here? Uh, the, actually, I took this uh, picture uh, out of my office window. So we are fortunate to move a brand new uh, civil engineer building. That building happens to locate right on the side of the Tennessee River, so a lot of Tennessee. Uh, all, I see this bridge every day, okay? So when I you know, go to work, I think you see uh, quite a few things. I think most important thing is this old, uh, Masonry railway bridge pier. Okay, uh, I don't know which part of the you know uh, you are from. I'm sure uh, you all agree. And at this in U.S., uh, most of the rail bridge was built and you know long long time ago, long long time ago. But uh, uh, but the majority of them are quite old. So before 1920s. So that's the peak. You can tell that's the peak over there. Now, why now? Why now? So a few years ago, uh, University of Tennessee, Knoxville, uh, we worked together with uh, Illinois uh, during the Obama administration years. Uh, at that time, we were looking at uh, upgrading, uh, you know, increase the speed of the railway bridge, not, not high speed like you see in China. Uh, we did complete the first phase of study, and we were hoping to get the second phase, and then we didn't I think the NU University Center, we didn't get a second phase of funding. But during the first phase, we're looking at uh, all the river bridge pier. Uh, for preparations like this, so you see this bridge from uh, Australia. Uh, it's very tentative, attractive to reuse those old bridge pier because you can imagine it's extreme hard challenge to replace those. And as you, know, you see, major problem. So we did look into that. Uh, I asked the child to look at all the records. Uh, has anyone came from, uh, happens to, from uh, Colorado? Okay, so uh, we did get a lot of help from uh, Transportation uh, uh, Center, TTCI Center, uh, there uh, using their database, a quite extensive database. Uh, to record all the past earthquake uh, you know, river bridge peer uh, survey records. So you essentially can tell from this pie here uh, that database, including all, uh, some of the you know, papers, you know, uh, reports, all of that, majority of that uh, uh, considered undamaged. So I would imagine uh, some of the bridge pier has to be located in high seismic active zones. So surprisingly, only 3% of that uh, considered damaged. So this is the right side of that pie show uh, what is uh, considered damaged. So all of that have severe motors and night damage. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, I'm going to focus on this 14 uh, so-called damage record. Uh, 
or specific related to iron reinforced, keyword here, iron reinforced, no steel. So I know this is a concrete uh, conference, uh, but we do have you know, some masonry. Hopefully uh, you accept that. So just give you uh, some a typical example. Uh, so this is the full, you know, uh, the considered cracked after earthquake. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, in San Francisco and this is in Japan. Uh, by the way, the database does contain about 13% of record from international, like in Japan, uh, China, uh, a country like that. Um, but what our interest essentially is looking at the, those kind of considered uh, severe damage because that definitely should be a concern. So uh, as you can tell from these three old pictures, uh, what is surprising, uh, the, all the failure surface, uh, failure plane occur roughly in the center of that bridge pier. Uh, sliding. And that one is debatable. Uh, we couldn't find detailed record whether uh, during that particular Tonsan earthquake that uh, I'm reinforced concrete pier rocked or just, you know, about to open that, you know, wide uh, and then earthquake stop. Uh, we couldn't find that detail on that. That would be uh, very interesting because we really want to look at rigid body rocking phenomena during this project. So the hypothesis, if you look at the uh, Rima code, uh, you, you can see that, you know, read that language. The language essentially say, okay, uh, the good performance, when you compare, especially compare against highway bridge, you can't imagine a highway bridge pier without steel, right? So, but all those old uh, river bridge uh, perform, you have to agree, uh, relative good, uh, especially considering 4,000 some record, only 3% uh, consider damage or severe damage. Uh, the hypothesis has been a uh, restraint effect from the real track, okay? So uh, just imagine if you have the rocking and on top you have the you know, restraint that tends to observe earthquake energy. So the challenge here is how do we get a sense of that stiffness, okay? That uh, so-called restraint effect from real track. So I encourage Chan to look at literature. Uh, he did manage to find two uh, field testing uh, conducted by TTCI here. Uh, this is one of the bridge, it's called the Open Deck Bridge. Uh, they did push at one, uh, I think, bottom and end of that Open Deck Bridge uh, twice. Uh, I, I, I'm not hoping you can read that you know, plot there. Hopefully, you know, if you have interest, you can look in the tape, uh, paper uh, Chan submitted to Based, uh, you know, proceeding. So essentially, it says, uh, you know, twice one without the track, real track. Essentially, uh, they push uh, with the track intact, and then they push it again, cut the real track loose. So uh, that's essentially the, the difference. So uh, the pa the paper itself, this is a report. Uh, there's a lot of bridge. Uh, again, he found from literature. This is a ballast deck bridge. So we're trying to look at both type of the bridge. Again, this is uh, published uh, uh, based on full field testing, but without a uh, nonlinear analysis. So again, we have the similar uh, you know, uh, performance based on field testing uh, for two case with a track without track. So I'm encouraging Chan to look into this and reanalyze uh, as best as he could uh, to get a sense of the restraint effect uh, from the track. Uh, he's been working on that. Now, with the, uh, here's a, a you know a brief uh, uh, result. You know, I would say a primary result he got. He using a uh, sub two thousand. I just heard uh, Bruno's you know, presentation. Probably I'm going to ask him to look into your paper to make sure he's doing the right thing. Uh, but looks like a good thing is uh, he, he does have a field testing result as shown dotted line, uh, solid line here. So that dotted line is rep reproduced. Uh, based on uh, the constitutive law of the materials, uh, as he, you know, he could find from report and papers, and, and uh, uh, uses, again, SAP 2000, uh, uh, nonlinear analysis. Uh, that's the primary result he, he's getting. So based on that, um, what do we want to do? Now we want to uh, essentially look at uh, during the earthquake. This is the loss-rich record uh, he used uh, 
we are in the process of setting up a large shake table. You know, we hired a new uh, faculty in our department. Uh, Lake is working on it to get a new shake table working, but uh, Chang is using this smaller shake table because we're trying to get the models, you know, some concept work. So I'm going to, you know, uh, read, so on the left side you see is the two blocks. He tried to look at all different kinds of, you know, height over breadth ratio because that's one of the key parameters during the rocking or sliding uh, uh, behavior of that. So uh, uh, he stacked two of, on top of each other. So left side without strain, you can, you can tell that's the spring he attached. The right side is the, the spring. Let me see if the, this video can work. Okay, good, it's working. Okay, so I, I don't think it's a surprise. Uh, you know, you, you can also tell from the, uh, the history curve here uh, on the left side, it just, you know, uh, fell down uh, about, you know, four seconds, and the right side working pretty good. So that's, the, uh, again, uh, one you know, testing he did. He, again, he, he tried to do lots of things. But essentially, as a PhD student, I encourage me looking into uh, how do we model this? How do we analyze? You know, in other words, once you get the shake tape test result, how do we get? Look, again, look at the, uh, back into literature, majority of the you know, rigid body rocking all uh, trace back to Hosler's 60s papers. Uh, Hosler made uh, these you know, A to G assumptions, okay? So I told Chang as a minimum, you have to look at, and you know, we are not, uh, you know, free, for example, here, when uh, there's a free rocking, in other words, Hosler, you can tell from this you know, left side of the sketch there, essentially, you don't have the string on top. And, and another thing, he, uh, some of the, you know, uh, assumption we have to revisit based on the earthquake record we observed. So. That's, that's where he is. Uh, he's still working on that. As I said, he has one more year. Uh, with that, I think my time is about right now. So I give you a summary. Uh, I would say, uh, the, you know, to me, the most interesting uh, observation based on the database, uh, we try to explain that. Uh, you know, again, number one, not many, very few of them damaged. Number two, if damaged, uh, the failure surface occurred roughly in the middle of that pier. So uh, the small shake tape test, and you know, confirm preverbally, uh, tentatively, I would say, with the strain, which we can understand, uh, performs better compared with uh, the one without the strain on top. So with that, uh, I'm going to uh, you know, acknowledge the financial support, again, as I said, from NU Rio Center and our Department uh, Center of Transportation Research, as well as our Civil Engineering Department. So with that, uh, I try to answer your question if I can. Thank you all.